I was getting ready to testify in a big case. I was getting my suit ready, came out of the shower, I'm getting dressed, got everything with me, my memo book, and all this stuff. I'm going to go down to court, and the phone rang. And you know when the phone rings at 6 o'clock, it's never good. And it was my mother. That was the morning of 9-11, saying, your father passed in the night. So I called the police department, and I was immediately put on bereavement leave. Three hours later, the first plane hit. Four days later, after my bereavement leave, I show up for work. And I was told, go back to the locker room. You don't need to wear a suit. You have blue jeans with you? Blue jeans, sweatshirt. Grab your partner. We went to Staten Island, what was called the landfill. And when we got to the landfill, we parked in this parking lot. Then they put us on a bus. A bunch of cops, all detectives. I realized then I looked around. There was no uniform. Cops we were all from the detective bureau. And we took this shuttle over to what really stunk. And as we pull up, the reeking smell of not only garbage, but something else it was in the air. I never will forget that aroma. And I got off and immediately ushered, ushered into a building. And this building we were ushered into, they had just gotten respirators. Um, so they fitted me with a respirator, then give, gave me a Tyvek suit. And now we're suited up with goggles, a respirator, and we're on these conveyor belts, standing opposite three detectives on one side, three detectives on the other. And things were coming across, things that I, I can't believe to this day that I saw. Personal effects, uh, sometimes bones, um, toys, uh, wallets, all sorts of different things. And then we had from there categorize them and put them into different receptacles. That went on, that was 12 hours. 12 hours on, 12 hours off. The next day, you were, first of all, let me go back a little bit. Thank God for the Salvation Army and the American Red Cross for serving us hot meals. We would have to go in this building, and they would brush you down. you take off your boots, take off your mask, put those down. You would eat, you come out, do the same thing in reverse. Now you get another Tyvek suit, you put your respirator back on, your goggles, your helmet, and you go back out onto the line. The next day you were set, sent to the morgue, and at the morgue um, we would go through personal effects also. Um, Things would get quiet, we would get called to attention, we would form two lines, and they were no doubt bringing in the body of a firefighter, typically a firefighter, because we lost, uh, God rest them, 343 firefighters and 23 NYPD cops. Um, typically it was a, a firefighter, and opening and unzipping those body bags, I, for years I could fumble with the zipper and I'd start crying my eyes out, because I would remember unzipping those body bags, and I won't go into the atrocities that, uh, that I saw of human life um, just perished, you know, and just beyond belief. You know, my worst nightmare, I would never imagine something like this. And um, we were there for each other, though, and that was another 12-hour shift, and typically you'd go with your partner. And um, then the next day, you were sent down to the pile, down to ground zero. And, uh, you know, we would, did something called the Bucket Brigade, and... Uh, Typically, you would go 12 hours there, then the next day, you, they'd want to mix it up a little bit, and then 12 hours uh, back to the landfill the next day, and this would go rotating round and round, and then 12 hours back to your squad because you had regular cases to handle. So you imagine that, you know, you got your mind on what you just saw, and now the next day, you're in the squad, and now you're handling your case, and somebody's fumbling because her brother showed up, but father passed away, and Dad hadn't seen his son in years, and they're squabbling over that, and I just saw the atrocities of 9-11, and I just, it was just like a wake-up call. Um, what I do remember is people from all over the place, um, kids, uh, just police officers and firefighters from other places. We saw different patches. Um, down at the morgue, you'd see a big thing with all the different, you know, missing uh, posters, people missing their loved ones. And within that, we were giving uh, li little greeting cards from kids from New Jersey, kids from Harlem, kids from wherever, and little tokens of gifts, the gift that I still have in my powder room here in South Carolina. It's a little stool, and it has, uh, it's red, white, and blue uh, that it was painted, and uh, different things like that. Um, we had pastors that came over and would just start making conversation. Um, the um, atrocities 9-11 have not gone completely, and they never will, because it's like Russian roulette. Every time you turn around, we're losing another uh, police officer or firefighter. 
or um, someone else that was just a civilian that happened to work in the area, we're losing these people and you never know who's going to be next. Uh, we have a World Trade Center clinic that we all go to. I'm give myself up here. Um, I'm five months overdue for the checkup because I feel great and, and God has been good. Um, my dad was my hero, my angel, because if he didn't pass that morning, I was going to be in court and the courthouse was right near 9-11. It was on Center Street. So my dad's my hero. He's my angel. But um, every day we keep learning of other police officers and firefighters that are dying and um, we never know who it's going to affect. And I, like I said, uh, I shared that I put off my checkup because I feel good and I don't want a doctor to tell me you're not good. So I, I kind of delay it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm a cop. You know, I'm fine. I'm fine. And uh, that's the issue here. And uh, with that, uh, I'm just going to pass it along to Les. And uh, I thank you all for being here and uh, to listening to, to us. Thank you.